It's not easy. It's not easy. When you know you're facing the loss of a life, it's not easy. But I thank God there's no burden that he cannot bear. No burden that he can't carry. And he's carrying our pastor God will do it. And he's going to carry him all the way. And he's going to have peace in this situation that he's undergoing right now. So let us continue to keep him in prayer. And whatever you can find your hands to do to help and bless him, do that please in Jesus' name. There's a song I would love for us to hear now. It's called, I Speak Jesus. That's the only name. You don't need no other name but Jesus. That name by itself has the whole world in it. It has all the powers of hell. It has defeated everything the devil can come up with. Even death it has defeated. So when we speak that name Jesus, you speak in power. And that name Jesus carries you through anything. When you can't think of anything else to say, just say Jesus. Let the church say, Jesus. Let the church say, Jesus. Let the church say, Jesus. And the demons flee. Yeah. They can't stand that name. They don't want you to speak that name. They don't want you to say that name. But they want you to use it blasphemously. They want you to use it in the same sentence with the other cursing words. Yeah. That's okay, because it has no meaning and no power there. Thank you, Lord. Oh, but when you separate it, and you know what you're calling that name for, yeah, that's right. then the devil will flee. Mm -hmm. I have a song I love for my sister to put on called, I Speak Jesus. I'm not much of a singer, <laughs> so um, parts of it I may sing, and parts of it I may not. But I just want you all to hear it. It's my sister can play it. Okay, sorry about that. You can play it. Okay. And could you turn it up, please?
Okay, that's all right. We were just about to get into it, but that's okay, my sister. I told you the devil don't like it. <laughs> so any way he can interfere that name, he will find a way. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's, it's an honor to be before you, uh, to be able to share the word of God. And um, my topic for the day is own the word. Own the word of Jesus. Own that word. Hallelujah. Own those promises. Mm -hmm. You know, the Christian religion is not about our behavior, but it's about a relationship yeah. with God. Yeah. Some people think Christianity is about following a set of rules and practices for a God who is demanding and fault-finding but that is far from the truth. All right. All right. God is not a demanding God. He's not a fault finding God. He's not the God that sits up in heaven with a bat in his hand. Come on. He's not a God where you can win brownie points Jesus. by you keeping the, the law and checking everything that you did right. Well, God, I think I earned that. Well, see, then you earn it. Mm -hmm. Then it's not a gift. All right. All right. So when you work for your righteousness, when you work to get favor, right. when you work, it's no longer a, 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 a gift. It's uh, earnings. He yeah. owe you. Uh. But Christ didn't come to give us earnings. For he says the wages. So if he got to pay wages, mm. what did he call wages? Sin. And then that leads to what? death. So let's get a change of mind about how we see God. Because he's not here to pay wages. And we shouldn't be in the mindset of trying to earn favor or earn righteousness. More than our performances or how well we can serve him, God cares about our relationship with him. It is a personal relationship with God. It's not performance relationship with God. He desires to pour his unconditional and extravagant love in our lives. See, I like to talk about Jesus. I like to talk about the power of that cross. Because yeah. there was more to it than salvation. Yeah. It's more to it than being saved. Mm -hmm. And if all we can see is just salvation, we have negated the power of the cross. Yeah. We did not give all the glory and honor that God had for the cross to give us. That's our starting point. As Christians, that's where we start. Now the enemy is defeated. He's under our feet. We are walking from a point of victory, not going to victory. We are already in victory. All right. Yes. We are already victorious. Mm -hmm. So we want to walk from a point of being victorious, mm -hmm. not heading to being victorious. Okay. But we are already there. That's where we start from. Hallelujah. The fullness of God's love for us was demonstrated at the cross when he sent his beloved son to die for us. And today, when God looks at us, he does not see our faults. Isn't that good? But we see our faults. And we see other faults of us. Yes. And we are good for pointing that out. I'm good for reminding what you did to me. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know if y'all got that problem. Yeah, I got that problem. <laughs> I got it. I thank God he's working on me, but I got it. You don't do me wrong, and I ain't going to tell you about it. <laughs> you know? But here is a Father God. Hallelujah. Jesus. He sees it all. But yet, he refused. Why can't we be like that? 
Why can't we be like that? But we can, depending on how much of Christ we want to operate in. Because it's nothing too hard for him to do through us. We just got to give him the permission. And remember, we ain't robots. You know? We are free will beings. So, that's what I had to tell myself. God, I'm tired of finding faults in others and, mm. and what they done done to me and me remembering that. I am tired. That's my weakness, so Lord, you got to take that. Oh, my Can you give God your weakness? Oh, my Can you be bold enough uh. to show God your weakness Jesus. instead of trying to hide it from people and putting up that front? Oh, help me, Jesus. See, you are being a hypocrite. Tending to be something that you ain't. All right. That ain't you. Not when you own the word of God and not when you're a child of God. You know? Be bold with your witness and say, God, this is where I'm short. I'm falling short in this area. I'm falling short because I can't help but cuss every other word. I'm cussing. But you know you're born again, but somehow that tongue gets the best of you. You done dress somebody up and down seven different ways. <laughs> but see, that's a weakness. But you got to call it a weakness. And say, well, God took everything away from me except smoking. Have you heard that? He done got everything away from me, but he ain't strong enough to take smoking. No, you don't want to give it up. You can't tell me, God had only power enough to take everything else away from you, but he just could not deal with your smoke. Please. <laughs> Come on. Let's get real. That's a relationship. That relationship with God is he saying all your other That's right. Every bit of that stuff that you have from me. So I won't. Or you hide from anybody else, even from your spouses. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. that you always hide. See, then you insecure in your love with that person. Mm -hmm. That's insecurity. Because you're afraid if they see that side of you or know that much about you, they're going to leave you. Uh -huh. But with God, He said, I never leave you, I never forsake you. Mm -hmm. Show me your ugliness. Talk to me about your ugliness. Mm -hmm. it, are you dealing with uh, uh, fornication? Are you dealing with adultery? Are you dealing with your mindset, how your mind is thinking mm -hmm. constantly? What are those thoughts that people can't see on the outside mm -hmm. that uh, you're still dealing with? See, building your relationship with God is letting him see all the ugliness. I can tell you this. My husband, bless his soul. My first one. And I ain't kill him. <laughs> I got a second one. So I'm going to tell him no. I ain't kill my first one. <laughs> but my first one, hallelujah. He was a rocket scientist. <laughs> rocket with the side of drugs. And that was in my much younger years. And I tell you, this man, oh, oh my God, I didn't know I could go through what I went through, but I went through it. I wanted to kill him. Because I thought he was the answer to I mean, he, that Killing him would solve what I'm going through in my marriage. All right. So I, nobody ever never think about killing nobody. So I thought, right, I'm going to let y'all see me. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all know where I was coming from. <laughs> So I want this man dead, dead, six feet under. Because I done had three babies by this man. And he's still going on strong. So I wanted him dead. So I tell the Lord, I want this man dead. I want you. Just as honest as I can be. And I said, you know, all I got to find is another drug addict. Give him 10 or 15 dollars, he'll do the job. That's the way I was thinking. Because I done got tired of this Negro. Yes, Lord. So as time goes on, I am trying not to meditate on killing the Negro myself. That's just how bad it is. 
all the generations yeah. from the Old Testament. That's why when you read the Old Testament, you got to bring it to the New Testament right. and see what Jesus has delivered us from. Yeah. He delivered us from a lot of the old ways yes. in the Testament time. Yes. Because the blood of bulls and animals and goats wasn't enough. Right. The judgment that came from God ate up the sacrifice. Come on. But when Jesus came, Hallelujah. And God put his judgment on the sacrifice. Yes. Guess what the sacrifice did? Absorbed the judgment. Come on, preacher. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Have you ever looked at it that way? Jeez. That Jesus, our sacrifice, absorbed all the judgment that God had for man. Yes. To the point God was exhausted. Yes. And that's why he don't see our sins. That's why we are not under judgment anymore. Only those who are outside of Christ That's right. will be in the judgment yes. of God. But we who are under judge, under Christ, in Christ, through Christ, oh, we have passed judgment. Yes. So don't let nobody put you and say, oh, the, the white throne of judgment. That's not for us. Judgment right. has passed us. That's right. I want, it, I want you to see the significance of Jesus and the cross. Yes. It's more than salvation. Yes. It has brought total freedom yes. to us. Whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. Yes. And that freedom comes with more revelation and understanding that you see Christ in his beauty, yes. in his deity. In his righteousness that he has given to us. We had no righteousness. And I guess y'all hear me saying that. That has been like revelation to me. The righteousness of God that he gave. Yeah. I didn't have to work for it. That's right, right. He gave it to me. That's just how well he sees us. That's the beauty of God. Yeah. Every one of you sitting here. Who have given their lives to Jesus. You are his yeah. And you can proclaim that boldly. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ right. Jesus. Mm -hmm. On the word. That's, right. That's a part of the word. Yeah. I'm blessed. That's the word. Yeah. So we need to get away from what the world tells us how to say things mm -hmm. and own who we are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Lord, I'm, I'm just telling you, so good to us. The fullness of God's love for us was demonstrated at the cross when he sent his beloved son to die for us. And today, when God looks at us, he does not see our faults. Instead, he sees us righteous because of Jesus' finished work at the cross. And you can find that at 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, where he calls us a man who knew no sin became sin yeah. for us. Yeah. He took on our sin. When he hung on that cross, that was supposed to be for us. Yeah. But he took our place. And then he gave us his righteousness. Mm. So be bold and own it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And you know what? Another thing I found out when I got this really revelation and understood and believed it, instead of basing it on my feelings because I didn't feel righteous, mm. what do I know what righteousness feel like? Mm. Do any of us know what righteousness feel like? Mm. We mm. don't. We have no clue. We might think it's being good all the time. No. What about your mind? That ain't good all the time. Uh. Your tongue ain't good all the time. Mm. Some of your actions. So we don't know what righteousness is. So we had to get the gift of righteousness only through Christ Jesus that we got the righteousness of God. And we need to proclaim it. So in your weaknesses, whatever that may be, if you're getting high and you really don't want to get high, but you can't help yourself because that's your weakness, start declaring who you are. I guarantee you. 
That high, that drinking problem you might have, that cursing problem when you curse it, and if you really hate it, but you can't control it yourself, that smoking habit you say God didn't take, start declaring I'm the righteousness of God while you got that cigarette in your hand. I guarantee you it will drop. It will drop because that's just how powerful the word is. And when you begin to believe that you are the righteousness of God, that habit will work. That's how he's given us power over all the power of the enemy. How do we have power? It's the word. And when we stand and claim that word, so whatever your weakness may be, lying in the midst of your life, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it sounds contradictory. It sounds like you're lying to yourself. But see, it ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. You're claiming who you are in Christ. So your feelings will tell you you're lying. The devil will say, how are you going to say that if you still smoke it? Say, it's the word. I'm owning the word. I'm learning how to own the word. Because I can't break this cigarette habit. I can't break this adulterer habit. I can't break this fornication. I can't break this. Somehow it ain't working. I don't told God about it, but it ain't working. Well, I'm going to give you the secret. Declare the word in the midst of your mess. Yeah. And watch it break. It will break. I am somebody that will put it to the test. In the midst of my mess, I started declaring, declaring, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I can't remember when it stopped. I can't remember when the desire left because I was no longer focusing on what I couldn't control. I had something to focus on, and it was Jesus. And it took my focus off. And it's so hard to do that when you're in the midst of mess because you know it's wrong. That's right. You know? And you don't feel right doing it. But I'm telling you, sisters and my brothers, it works. Declare that I am the righteousness of God in your midst, and I guarantee you, you're going to see a difference. I can't give you something that I don't know. I don't been there. And I am telling you, it works. So then, Christ became the sin for us so that we can have the gift of righteousness. And we call that. Experience joy and thankfulness when you see God's heart for you. I want to reveal to you today God's heart, Jesus' heart. I want to talk about Jesus. I want you all to see and get an understanding just how much Jesus loves you. We often are quick to point out what's wrong, that's what I was saying, with the people around us or complain about a situation we are in <clears throat> that we are in instead of giving thanks for the good in our lives. While we may have the natural tendency to complain and find fault in others, our Lord Jesus is quick to spot what is beautiful in us. Instead of finding the fault, he see the beauty in us. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, a complaining spirit is a result of our own preoccupation with the cares and worries of our lives. Not only do we find ourselves unhappy and depressed, but we may even start to blame the people around us for situations we're in. We see this amplified in the story of Mary and Martha. Someone turn to Luke 10. 38 through verse 42. And read that for me. That is in Luke chapter 10. Verse 38, 42. Anybody got it? Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now they came to pay. And they went. And he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Yes. And she had a sister called Mary, which also said that he was sweet, and heard his word. But Martha was humbled about my servant, and coming to him, and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Dear her, therefore, 
she was at the foot of Jesus. When the Lord Jesus made a visit to their house, Martha was so preoccupied with serving the Lord. And sometimes we get like that. We become so occupied to serve the Lord. Y'all forget what God wants to serve us. He wants us to call on him. His heaven is so plentiful us. We can never outgive, outdo God. We can never stop requesting that God say, well, you got to wait the next week because I got to go and get um, uh, some more supplies. I'm out. I got to go get some more supplies. What? But he wants to serve us. Yeah. He's willing to serve us. Mm. And so, uh, as Martha was so busy and so preoccupied serving the Lord and bruised herself with all the preparations that is needed to be done. Mary, on the other hand, chose to sit at the Lord's feet to listen to him. This left Martha really upset. Have you been in situations like that? Yeah, you know y'all got some things coming on, some important people coming to the house, and this might be a prophet of God. This might be an apostle of the Lord, and he comes to your house. Well, you are so busy wanting to get everything together, or you got a few people that wants to sit down and listen to what the man has to say. That would be what I want. And I think the, the other stuff will fall into place. But Martha had her mind on trying to get everything right for God. She wanted the house to be clean. She wanted the food to be hot and ready. But Ma Mary was getting her food already. She was being faithful. Yeah. She saw that that was more important than the physical food. And sometimes we got to leave the physical food alone. That's, right. That's why it's called fasting. Sometimes we just got to put that to the side mm -hmm. and go and seek Jesus. That's right. And go and sit at his feet. Yeah. So when Martha complained to Jesus, this is what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. To the Lord, the only necessary thing for us to do is to sit at his feet and receive from him. Instead of being troubled about many things, the Lord wants us to put aside the things burdening our hearts and take time each day to be in his presence and receive his love. Mm -hmm. Doing the one thing needful is what will leave us having a spirit of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Even if things in our lives are not going well, we can still be thankful to God, his goodness that's in our lives. Mm -hmm. We need the Lord and his grace to see how good he is in our lives. Right. You know what? Everybody got something to complain about. Mm. We got something to complain about right now. Right. But have you ever thought about just being thankful for what you got? Yeah. Have you ever said, well, it could have been worse? Yeah. Have you seen people who are in worse situations than what you're in? You yeah. think your situation is bad. Yeah. When I see somebody in something worse, mm. God, I am grateful. I just have to throw up my hands. Yeah. I say, God, I don't even realize how good I have. I'm complaining of this little one day, and here's this person going through something worse than me. Let's have a more thankful heart yeah. for what we have, yeah. what God has blessed us with. We still got our right minds. Do we got our right minds? Are we in the middle of yes. <laughs> But thank God we are here today. Yeah. You all came out. That's I'm, I'm grateful for that. I am grateful, and you should be grateful to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and we're getting Lord, ready to go so you can be able to fellowship the rest of the day. Yeah. But at least you saw fit to come and sit at the feet and at the table of the Lord Amen. to be fed, yeah. to be blessed, Amen. to get a word for this week. Yeah. You might not have remembered everything what was said, <coughs> but if you remember one thing, and it can carry you through the week to you meet again, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Meditate on that one thing. Mm -hmm. There might be some naysayers who will argue that they can't only focus on receiving from the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
And that is so important for us to serve him. But while serving is good, the Lord desires for us to first sit at his feet and receive from him, just like Mary did. Serving comes out of the overflow. See, when you don't been ministered to first, then you serve. That is out of your overflow. But you can't serve if you don't haven't been set down yet to be ministered to All right. from the Lord. Yes. It makes serving very tasteful. It makes it very hard, and you don't want to do it. But when you sit at the feet of the master, he will minister to you. He will give you that grace to you need, and he will make what that task that you may have to face not be so tasteful, hard, and difficult. Because what? You said at his feet first. And he fed you. He ministered to you. He served you. He served you your daily bread. So that you can face what's ahead of you for that day. Now you're serving from an overflow. And that's the way we need to look at serving. Have I been fed yet from the Father? So that I can now serve out of my overflow? I can now give and do out of my overflow. Yeah. Where it's not past for if the pastor called me to do something, I gagged them. Nah. Why are right. you calling on me? <laughs> and she got all them all the kind of people in the church. And it had to be me. Mm. I know sometimes we act like that. Yeah. When we are asked to do something. Yeah. See, I didn't get served that day. Yeah. Mm. I'm acting now out of my flesh. All right because I didn't sit at the master's feet today or this morning or this afternoon. So when I'm asked to do something and it's going to pull me out of my comfort zone, I'll do it gracefully because God has prepared me for it. Mm -hmm. But when I have not sat at his feet at any time during the day, guess what? I'm acting out of flesh now. Mm -hmm. You know, say one thing wrong to me, you might get an eye you don't want. You didn't think Sister Brown would give it to you. Nah. <laughs> okay, just keep it real. <laughs> but when you're at his feet and fed, I'm telling you, and it doesn't have to be 30, 48 hours in that day, but you took some time out and got before him before you started your day. And you put your day into his hand. So what activities that you may face is down the road, Guess what? He's ungraced you for it. Because you came at the table and he served you. You didn't serve him. He served you. Now you go and serve others. That's how that goes. Sometimes we feel like we got to go serve God first. No, we got to that. We got to go get served. Be served by the Father. Let him serve us. Then we take that sermon and we operate out of our own form to others. Praise God. Did that make sense? Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to skip. I, I, I really typed a lot because I just wanted so much. But I am not going to do that. I am going to talk about this one thing about washing up the feet what Jesus did. And then I'm going to end. Um, we can see the Lord's heart to serve us in the sermon he preached to the disciples in the upper room. Jesus, knowing the Father, had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. He rose from the supper and he laid aside his garments. He took a towel and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a linen towel which he had girded. Even though our Lord Jesus had been given everything by the Father, he chose to lay aside his majesty, his gift. He just chose to lay aside who he really was and to serve his disciples. Today he wants to serve us and wash our feet too. So what does it mean 
for the Lord to wash our feet. And I want to give you this. Some might read John 13, 8, and think that it refers to us being born again. But let's look at what the verse says. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Notice how the Lord said that Peter would not have no part with him and not in him. This tells us that the washing of our feet does not refer to our salvation, but it refers to our walk with the Lord and enjoying communication with him. In John 13, 10, the Lord told Peter, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And in Revelations 1, 5 tells us that our Lord Jesus has bathed us from our sins with his blood. This means that we are already clean. Instead, the washing of our feet here refers to us being washed by the water of God's word. That's why I say own the word. Now the benefits of allowing the Lord to serve you through his word, one, we become less susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. Let's take a look at Genesis 3.14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust. Pastor was talking about dust earlier. <laughs> you shall eat dust all the days of your life. After the devil tempted Adam and Eve to sin against God, God prophesied that the enemy would eat dust all the days of his life. And we, men, are made from the dust of the earth, which is in Genesis 2, 7. In other words, we are food for the enemy who will always try to attack and defile us with negative thoughts and emotions. Now look at what the Bible says in this verse. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with his linen cloth. And that is in John 13, that's verses three through five. The Greek word for white is ekmeso, which means away from, being devoured. This means that when we allow the Lord to wash the dust off our feet with the water of his word, we prevent ourselves from being devoured by the enemy. We become less susceptible to the enemy's attack. Number two, it keeps us con conscious of our righteousness in Christ. In John 13, three through five, we see that after the Lord washed his disciples' feet, he used a towel to wipe the feet dry. The Greek translation for the word towel is linen, which refers to a linen cloth. A linen cloth is a picture of our righteousness. Revelations 19, eight. This means that after we spend time in the Lord's presence, we walk away with a consciousness of our righteousness in him. Whether it's a bad habit, negative emotions, unclean thoughts that we struggle with, when we allow the Lord to wash us with the water of his word, 
we allow him to remind us of our unshakable right standing before God. We allow him to help us see that we are still justified and forgiven. And this washes away all self-condemnation that we may feel. And when we are established in righteousness, we have the power to break free from sinful habits and the things bogging us down that starts walking and we then start walking in victory. I wanted to let you all know that only the word of God really give us the victory in Christ Jesus. Let the word of God wash you. Let it begin to be a cleansing power that we take in daily. Even when you're watching too much TV, something should go off in you and say, did I read my word today? At least did I open it up? Did I look at it today? Did I get my feet washed today? Because when you get your feet washed, and when the water of God washes you, it makes us less susceptible to the devil. Because we are food. We are made from dust. And God told him that he would eat dust. So that means that we are food for the enemy. Mm -hmm. So if we don't want to be food for the enemy, guess what? We need to own the word. Yeah. We need the washing of God's word. Yeah. And I pray that this has blessed you all in some way that are uh, taking our position is serious and that it's just not something that we should take for granted. It's a powerful tool that we have in Christ Jesus. And I thank God for the washing of his word and that this week it will be a washing for you as you travel through whatever life has before us this week and that we will meet you again on next Sunday. Thank you. Amen. 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 Amen.